Hello there, so we're going to be looking at how to get the perfect reverb settings for your vocals in any genre or any style of music you produce. Hit the subscribe button and let's get started. There are some things you need to do before you even start using your reverb, right? You want to make sure that your vocals are well tuned, right? If that is singing, you want to make sure that it's well compressed. Like we have right here, we have a compressor. And you want to make sure it's well EQ to take out modular frequencies and resonance because this can impact how your reverb will sound. You don't want a dull sounding reverb or a harsh sounding reverb. You want just a smooth, silky sounding reverb, right? And then you want to make sure you take care of any artifacts, noise, or homes or buzz you may have with restoration tools from maybe um, Waves restoration suit or isotope restoration suit. And you want to make sure as well you have any other dynamic effects before because if you have dynamic effects after your reverb, it's going to change how your reverb sound. It may make your reverb sound a lot more pronounced than it actually is. So you want to make sure your reverb comes last in most cases, right? That's not always this, that's not always the way it's going to be, but in most cases, your reverb should come last or amongst the last of your um, processes in your mixing chain. So here we have a fruity stock reverb, which is one of my favorite reverbs, by the way, right? All round for mixing, right? I really like the stock reverb in um, FL Studio because it's easy to use. So right here we have our uh, high cut, low cut, uh, bass, um, wet knob, size, diffuser, delay, right? So we're going to go through most of these parameters that we actually need to get great reverb settings as we progress in this tutorial. So, but before we actually go very far, to let you know that I do offer one of one private lessons where I teach you personally via Zoom, right? how to make much better music in no time. If you're tired of scrolling through YouTube, looking for tutorials, and sometimes you just don't know what you don't know, right? You may not know the processes you need to follow, the steps you need to make much better music. You may just end up consuming a lot of jargons that may not be helpful or useful to you at this time in your learning stage. So hit the link in the description below that says one-on-one -on -one learning, right? And I'm going to find, fill up the form and I'm going to get back to you promptly. All right, now let's get back to the tutorial. So, now our tempo is 114 BPM, and this is very important because it gets to tell us the delay, right? There's a pre-delay of our reverb, and also the decay of our reverb. This helps it sound more like it's in tempo, right? It makes it sound more in tempo with the um, track, so it doesn't sound overwashed, right? Or underwashed or too dry, you know? It doesn't sound like it's spilling onto the next vocal. Instead, it just sounds musical, like it follows the track. So now, and how to find our um, reverb settings, right? It's with a free resource online, right? Called a Reverb Calculator. And one of the um, uh, websites that you can find this is anotherpreserve.com. I'm going to link this Reverb Calculator in the description below so that you can um, easily get yours as well. So let's look at our project again. It says 114 BPM, all right? So I'm going to just type this in 114 BPM. And when I press enter, you can see the reverb size hall, large room, small room, and tight ambience notes, right? So let's start, usually for lead vocals, I usually go with the large room, right? For lead vocals, I go with large room. I mean, for background vocals, I need more ambient sound going on. I go for hall space. So these are usually my two go-to presets I use for um, vocal reverb. So let's look at the large room for this, all right? So we can see our pre-delay here, it says 32, milli 32.89 milliseconds and then 2702 milliseconds as well now i want you to know that this may not always be pinpoint accurate in your door because some reverb um are not that um precise in dialing it in so you can just go to the nearest number like for example maybe in fl studio it could be 31 or 35 right that's also fine and it could be maybe 2100 or 2000 right so that's also fine just so just try and dial it into the nearest number you can get in your reverb plugin so now let's look at pretty late 32.89 and then 2072 so let's go um our pretty late is you can see the top panel of the screen right here so let's see if we can get 32 nope 31 is the closest we can get to right so the other one is 2072 right that's our decay 2000 milliseconds something as two two seconds all right so let's see two so let's just stick with 2.1 yeah we can get 2.1 or let's go with 2.0 let's go with 2.0 so it doesn't spill the decay doesn't spill into the next track all right so now let's hear let's have the reverb all the way up there's wetness and let's hear how it sounds 
Now, this is not done. We still have a couple of things to do to get to sound even much more cleaner and better, all right? So the first thing you want to do is increase the room size, right? To make it large, right? Because remember, you're using the large room space right here. You can see you're using the large room. So you want the space. If you don't have this in your reverb plugin, it's fine. Just ignore this. But most times you should write the simulation of the space. Make it as large as you can, right? Then this is your frequency range. That's the frequency range you want it to affect. Most times you want it to affect your mid or your high mid frequencies to your high frequencies, all right? So let's say we have this around, let's say 400 hertz, okay? And then to let's say about one point, or let's say 3.8 or 3.5 kilohertz. Let's say 3.5 kilohertz also. Can we get 3.5? Yeah, somewhere around there. Let's hear it sounds. My because, because if I take this all the way up, your hair is going to sound. So it's going to reverberate a lot of the high end. So we don't want all that harshness coming in because of the reverb. So we're going to just take it to rev reverberate only the high mid frequencies. Okay. So let's take it to 3.5 again. I think 3.5 is fine for now. We may end up doing some changes, right? But for now, I think it's fine. So next one I want to do is actually work on the wetness itself, which takes all the way down and bring it gradually up to feel it's okay. So let me turn it off so you hear. Now let's turn it on and see. So if your reverb has stereo separation or stereo enhancement too, right, you can even come here to spread it out a little bit more, right, to make it sound more lush and occupy more sweet in the stereo field. So let's see how it sounds solo, right, with the reverb plugin. And then with, without it. And then if not, you can see how the reverb just, it doesn't wash into the um, next vocal, right? It just fades out immediately the, the words end. Mind so if you found this tutorial helpful don't forget to leave a thumbs up so other people that need this video can easily find it right here on youtube and hit the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with the latest tutorials from sc tools see you soon cheers